Hello and welcome to this edition of Somerville Media Center Live. Today is April 30th, 2020. I'm Joe Lynch for the Somerville Media Center. Be sure to be watching this on Facebook Live. Watch for the repost on Channel 3, Somerville Media Center, and on our video on demand feature. I'm pleased to be joined once again this week by State Senator Pat Jalen. Patricia Jalen, how are you this afternoon? I'm good, thank you. So Very far, good. so good. Good, but we have some uh, decidedly sad news that we're gonna be talking about today, which is gonna center on COVID-19 confirmed cases and the number of deaths within our nursing facilities or assisted living and our long-term care facilities. Um, before we get started, Pat, I wanna thank you for your kind words. Um, a COVID-related death hit me very early this week, over the weekend and, and this week. And it just goes to prove, even though Senator Jalen and I are gonna be talking about a lot of people who may have underlying health care uh, concerns and people of a certain age, um, I just wanna make sure that people understand that this vicious disease can hit anywhere, anytime. Because my personal connection to this was a longtime friend, perfect health, 56 years old with two kids. So, and it happened very, very quickly uh, within a seven day period. So I wanna thank everybody uh, who has reached out, including Senator Jalen. Senator Jalen, let's go right into these sad statistics that we now have about the nursing facilities, long-term long care facilities, and how this disease is hitting our people of a certain age. Well, as of yesterday, uh, the number of the percentage of people who had died in Massachusetts, who had died in nursing homes, was 58%. Close to 1,500 people have died in nursing homes across the state. And the state on Monday released a new plan to deal with it. It's late, but it's good. Um, but I feel disappointed that we weren't able to get the state to step up earlier with testing, PPE, staffing, uh, and money. Uh, they had stepped up with $130 million earlier in April, uh, which they distributed to nursing homes. This, this set of money will go out in two months, $130 million. Uh, it will be used only for staffing, PPE, infection control, and uh, they will be monitoring every two weeks to make sure it's correctly spent and there will co be consequences if it's not. So I think it's a good response, but it's just heartbreaking to talk to people. Um, I have four people who've contacted me uh, about our relatives in one nursing home. Um, they, it's very hard to talk to their relatives. Only one person a day at most is able to talk to the, to the mother. In one case, the mother doesn't speak English and there's no one there who can talk to her. So imagine that person with Alzheimer's and someone comes in to test her and stick a long stick into her nose to take a swab and no one can talk to her. It's just incredible to imagine how scary it is. Uh, think about people with Alzheimer's who don't know why they're, they can't remember why they're being kept in their rooms, why they can't go out, why people are coming in with masks uh, and, and clothes and gloves, they're not used to it. Why are their meals late? Uh, it's really very scary. And for the workers, it's very scary also. Workers are, are getting infected, workers are dying. Uh, and to try- I heard of one Sorry, Senator, go ahead. I uh, just one more who had died. And it's a single mother. Uh, Sen Senator, I'm sorry. It looks, it, Senator, it looks like your, your transmission is freezing a little bit. So we're having okay. a little, little trouble understanding. Here. Um, 
that he's off the computers upstairs. It's still not, not working. Um, it's intermittent. We know you're still there, Senator, but your your screen has frozen and your your audio is breaking up. Well, I think I think what I'd like to do is to give the senator a little bit of time to uh, kind of reboot and see if she can rejoin us. Hi. There you are. <laughs> Okay, we're doing our best. I don't we, know. We are. We're going to stay with you, Senator, so don't worry about it. Well, it's all challenging for everything. This is the least challenging thing about the problems. Um, where did we leave off? Oh, um, we were talking about, you had been mentioning a new tranche of funds that are coming in to assist these folks who are having so much trouble um, trying to attend to their residents. So the funding can be used for staffing, for infection control, uh, and uh, PPE. So, and they will be monitoring and they can't use the money for anything else. They can't put it into executive salaries or profits or even computers. They have to use it for those purposes. They will be monitored, not only for how they spend the money, but with how good a job they're doing on infection control, how adequate their staffing is, how good the communication with families is. So I think it's a really good plan. I'm very, very happy about it. Um, I know there are red, and one, they're also providing ways for people to get, for institutes, uh, for facilities to get staff uh, because staffing has really been a problem. They are going so, to finally send in the National Guard to do what they call medical and muscle. And they are going to make team, 10 teams of 12 people each available to the most hard hit. Um, Senator, let's stay, let's stay with that staffing part of it so that people understand why um, the funds are needed to beef up the staffing. And I read one of the reports yesterday that it, it just is heartbreaking about what a vicious cycle that this vicious disease is having on the care for our seniors. We typically have um, a number of attendants in a congregate housing like a nursing home or that are not necessarily the doctors and the nurses. Those are the folks who are helping these residents get to the bathroom or they're helping a resident get to the television room or they're delivering their meals if they are inbound in their apartments. Unfortunately, what's happened is that those workers, many times, that is not their only job. They are also working at other healthcare facilities, or they're working a second job, maybe at a supermarket or at a, and what's happening is that they are coming into the facility and to no fault of their own, unbeknownst to them, they may be COVID positive, but they cannot get the testing and they need the money to subsist. So they continue working. They're bringing the infection into their place of work. We don't have adequate testing for our seniors. What's happening now is that that 58 percent tile is showing the true underbelly of how this disease does not care. It's going to find a host somewhere and it's going to travel with that host. So when it goes back to how this money is going to be used, they have many of these workers, low paid workers who are working in these assisted living, these nursing homes. They are now sick themselves, so they can't come back to work. Yeah, that's that's entirely true. Uh, I forgot to mention that the state will be also requiring testing of all patients and all staff in every nursing facility. Uh, that doesn't include assisted livings at this point. Uh, assisted livings are separate because they are not uh, funded by Medicaid and the state and they're not regulated by DPH, so I have a Department of Public Health. But um, what you said about people having to work two jobs because they are paid 13 or 14 dollars an hour that is entirely true um, some of the cases have been brought in by 
by workers who were asymptomatic. So other cases have been brought in by patients returning uh, from a hospital stay because nursing homes all, almost all have rehab units so that patients have come in probably asymptomatic from a hospital stay. Um, that's how it has gotten in generally. Or by, or by family members, Senator. Not anymore. Not, Not any anymore, right. It brings up, let me, let me tie one thing into what you were saying about assisted living facilities. As you know, we have two very large facilities here in Somerville. And very early on, um, Linda Cornell, who is the executive director there, went into a self-imposed self, um, self lockdown. She locked down those facilities very, very early on in March. And as we reported, and she has reported out, their cases are almost nil in terms of the worker workers being positively identified and their residents being identified. So I, I'm not trying to compare the public side versus the private side, which assisted living facilities really are. But what's well, they actually do get state money, but they're not regulated by the Department of Public mm -hmm. Health. Right, but she, you know, I, I'll just get by why by way of example. And anecdotally, Linda said to me, you know, a lot of the families of those residents in the assisted living facility couldn't understand at the very beginning of this why they were being told they could not come in to visit their mom or their dad or their, their grandparents. And it was precisely for that reason that she took those actions is that those folks living in some of those facilities are highly susceptible to communicable disease and they don't care. That disease didn't care where it was coming from. No. So I just wanted to add that to, uh, as a kind of a, um, you know, kind of an example of folks who took um, actions very quickly and very early and, but she's facing the same dilemma that all of our assist, all of our, our um, elder care facilities are, is that she's, some of her staff won't come into work because they are afraid um, or can't come into work because their spouse may have lost their job and is now positive, so they have to stay home with kids. There's a whole mix of reasons why this thing is affecting everyone. But back on to the um, assisted living, I just wanted to make mention that, again, it came across my feed this morning, that in one veteran's home alone, 70 of those patients have died. And, and it's just astounding to me that when we, we as a society, Senator, not you and not all the good work that our legislators are trying to do here in Massachusetts, it's astounding to us that are still in good health, looking at how we talk about taking care of the most vulnerable amongst us, whether it be young kids or people of lower income or our seniors, how this could happen in this society is just mind boggling to me. So- it's, it, You're totally yeah. right that I think that it has revealed stuff that we knew about inequality. I'm thinking of one nursing home director who said, his, one of his CNAs said, I don't want to be tested because if I'm positive, I'll have to stay home. And if I stay home, I can't pay my rent. So it, it has revealed that this industry is built on low income people risking their lives. Uh, to do this important work. And the reason it's built on that, at least partly, is because the state doesn't pay high enough rates to the, to the facilities. At the same time, there are for profit companies buying up most of the Sorry, Senator, Se Senator, are you freezing up again there? <clears throat> Oh no, what can I do? It says I'm unstable. Yeah, uh, well, I, I'm do? not gonna be, 
I'm not going to be fresh on that, table. Senator. Uh, it's not me. It's my internet connection. If, uh. if you would, if you would like to go to audio only, Adam. Adam is in the background here. Adam, is there a way that we can just? Senator Jalen can use the uh, dashboard. I can take off my video. Stop, stop video, yeah. Video has to stop it. I don't know. Okay, there you are. There you are. So you're still on audio with us, Senator Jalen. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, where were we? Uh, we were talking. We were talking about are too low, but at the same time, I have to say that I'm glad that the new uh, process gives them more money, but it also has accountability, because there have been homes that spent the money on real estate investment trusts, on related corporations, on inflated executive salaries, on payments to their uh, headquarters and out of state. I don't want to target anybody. Uh, I'm not going to, I think both money. We also have to make sure the money in the future goes to these workers, even before this out, outbreak. 17% of the, of the staff positions in nursing homes were vacant. And it's not just nursing homes. It's also home care that the turnover in home care is extraordinary. It means that people go without services, but it also means that they have people with little experience and not, no relationships. They need people, we need to value not only the uh, people who are receiving um, services, but the people who are giving the services. If we really care about older people, then we have to care about the people who care about them. That, that's an excellent, excellent point, is that we cannot provide the care to the most vulnerable amongst us if we don't have healthy, well-paid caregivers. Um, I think it's just exposed that across the board, mm -hmm. that um, so many of the people who provide uh, the care, the essential services, the food service, the meat packing, the um, delivery, all of the places uh, where people are really taking care of other people, uh, preschool teachers, um, daycare workers, um, personal care assistants, all paid too little to live in this society with the kind of rents and the costs that we have. Let's, uh, I want to go back to something that you mentioned before, Senator Jalen, and, and that was the $130 million. My understanding is that is the second tranche of, of money that's coming out of the state. Is that an accurate right. statement? Uh, they did, I uh, think about two weeks ago, they raised um, the reimbursement for all Medicaid in nursing homes by 10%, and for uh, if you had a dedicated wing or unit for COVID positive patients, you get another 15%. So that has already happened, but that didn't come with any strings. So, you know, I did read, I read part of the bill um, and I understood what the debate was, is that some of these bigger conglomerates that run many, many, um, you know, nursing facilities, aftercare facilities, um, have an unscrupulous reputation, have a reputation for unscrupulously using these funds. So, you know, when it comes to debate on how the funds are gonna be used, I give kudos to those who are bringing that up and saying, hey, wait a minute, this money is for the residents. It's for that facility to keep running top-notch healthcare, not for an executive sitting halfway across the country in a high-rise office and is only worried about his own self when it comes to this. So I, I agree with the debate and I'm glad that those strings, as you call them, the strings attached were put in there. Let, let me bring it back home. I think it's really important. Uh, it's important for people to know what's really going on. 
and it's hard for people to know. For example, if you look at the uh, Medicare compare ratings, you those are two, two years out of date and there may have been real changes in the time. And there's also no correlation between what's the death rate at a nursing facility and its star rating on Medicare. There's so much that we need to know uh, and families want to know and people in the communities want to know and people who are considering moving their relative to a nursing home want to know what's going on. So we are pushing really hard for better reporting. Right now, you can on the state's website find out um, how many diagnosed cases there have been it's in range, and the highest range is, quote, body. Whereas nursing home that's reported as having over 30 cases may have had over 50 deaths. So that's, yeah. Yeah, as somebody who's been, um, you know, for the past dozen of years or so, who has been not only with my, my parents and, you know, some senior members of my, my family, I've been very keen to keep tabs on how certain rehabilitation centers, nursing homes, long-term long -term care facilities, on how well they do with their accreditation and how they are rated. And I would not be too surprised, Senator Jalen, to find out that there is a direct correlation between those homes that have been cited in the past for deficiencies and the higher death rates due to uh, coronavirus. I would not be surprised by that at all. I'm not sure of that. I'm just moving to another place, which I realized would have better reception. Okay. I'm gonna try again on, on video, because. Okay, Senator Jalen, if you're trying out for a job at the media center, I, I've got a hiring freeze going on here. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna make your cut off. <laughs> uh, I, can't, I can't start the video anyway. No, okay. Well, is, we've got your name up here so people know who we're speaking to. <laughs> let, let me go back to, um, before there's anything else that you want to um, bring in, let me just go ask you um, the question about some other district issues in congregate housing. I know that you have a lot of congregate housing in Medford and uh, some rehabilitation centers in Winchester and some in Cambridge. Yep. How are they all doing right now? Do we have any hot spots within any of them? We do in Medford. Um, I haven't talked to any of the directors. I have talked to one director in Cambridge this week. I talked to everybody in all of my district last week. And um, I think everybody had the same concerns, which was PPE and staff. And testing. Now everybody in in Cambridge has been tested. And now everybody in the other centers will be tested as well this week. And I think the PPE is coming through. And we will, I think I told you that we will, for people who are desperately short on, on staffing, there's two ways, they, there's three ways they can get it. Uh, one is the state is helping them with getting people from agencies or also from furloughed hospital and um, other uh, sources, healthcare workers who've been furloughed, but also the National Guard will go in. And also they have these teams, uh, specialized uh, rapid response teams of 12 medical professionals who will go in. And everybody should know, one of the things, most, many of the things that are in the report are things that we had recommended and that, because we'd heard them from directors of nursing facilities and from workers. And one is that they are now allowed to hire people called residential care assistants, which are not certified nursing assistants. Uh, it takes an eight hour course online and you can be hired to do this work and you can sign up on the state portal. Uh, so maybe later on we can post or people can go to um, the state website. Oh, be quiet. Uh, uh, there. <laughs> Senator uh, Jalen, we got your resume for, but no, I'm sorry. You're not qualified for several media. I think I'm never going to get a job with you all. <laughs> but listen, the Postal Service is looking for people $21 an hour and, and full benefits and pensions. 
postal service. Yeah. There you go. But for the well, we're gonna we uh, are going we are going to be uh, calling through a lot of the uh, currently available information for elder care, elder services, job opportunities, and we are going to be posting those on the Somerville Media site. Um, the, I think there the problem that people are facing across the board, uh, even restaurants, but certainly uh, elder care, is that because unemployment now has the $600 extra benefit, it's hard to get people to go back to work. Right, <laughs> right. But right. you can't say that the unemployment benefits are bad. It's good. It's wonderful. Uh, we just haven't, the balance is hard. It's, it's going to be difficult, Senator Jalen, moving back, m moving back into anything that even remotely remember, uh, resembles normalcy. But uh, speaking of moving back into a semi-normal way of doing things, what's the word from the State House? Um, do you get any sense as to when the actual facility may be reopening? The State House? The State House. Well, actually, it turns out uh, that the House was supposed to go back into virtual formal session today with actual votes. Uh, it would have been done virtually, um, but the Republicans objected to some of the rules. Um, so I don't know how that will work out, but the Senate, I'm on a committee that's going to, to revise the rules to allow some form. Either we would all go in and vote, go into the chamber one at a time, or we would um, vote by proxy, or we would um, have some other method of voting when we need to on, like for example, on a supplemental budget or a bond issue. Yeah, um, it, as you know, I serve in a part-time position uh, here in the city of Somerville and it does require voting. It does require public participation. Um, I think if somebody really put their their brain to this, they could figure out a way for all of you, both on the Senate and the House side, to do it virtually um, without putting your own health or anybody else, else's health in danger. And I would just ask your Republican colleagues on the Senate, and uh -huh. you, can, you can tell them it's coming from me. I'll say don't, what Rich said, yeah. yeah. Yeah, don't be fools. Don't be putting you know, staff at the uh, essential staff at the state house at risk and don't be putting your families at risk. But I think that, you know, you have to also be careful um, and make sure that the rules are fair and not cut off debate. Uh, that's what I think some of the comments in, in the house were about. So we will be, uh, be careful. I mean, we are working. The thing is you can make those judgments at a local level. We can't do that if one member objects. So it has to be total consensus. Well, as Somerville says, uh, municipal strength gives national, <laughs> municipal freedom gives national strength. <laughs> Senator Jalen, I wanna thank you for joining me today. We only have about 10 seconds left. So um, until next time, Senator, so Pat, Senator Pat Jalen, thank you very much for joining us. I'm Joe Lynch for the Somerville Media Center. See you next time.